Good morning, this is Pastor Jeff, and I'm here for our daily lectionary readings. Today's readings are for Wednesday, October 11th, 2023. Psalm 144, once again, is our psalm reading. Our Old Testament reading is the Song of Solomon, chapter 8, verses 5 through 14. And then our New Testament reading comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 11, verses 45 through 57. That being Wednesday, we are going to be reflecting on what is taking place the past Sunday at church. The message is our translation, Psalm 144. Blessed be God, my mountain, who trains me to fight fair and well. He's the bedrock on which I stand, the castle in which I live, my rescuing knight. The high crag will I run for dear life, while he lays my enemies low. I wonder why you care, God. Why do you bother with us at all? All we are is a puff of air. We're like a shadow in a campfire. Step down out of heaven, God. Ignite volcanoes in the hearts of the mountain. Hurl your lightnings in every direction. Shoot your arrows this way and that. Reach all the way from the sky to the sea. Pull me out of the oceans of hate. Out of the grip of those barbarians who lie through their teeth. To shake your hand, then knife you in the back. O oh God, let me sing a new song to you. Let me play it on a 12-string guitar. A song to the God who saved the king, the God who rescued David, his servant. Rescue me from the enemy's sword. Release me from the grip of those barbarians who lie through their teeth. Who shake your hand, then knife you in the back. Make our sons in their prime, like sturdy oak trees. Our daughters are shapely and bright as fields of wild flowers. Fill our barns with great harvest. Fill our fields with huge flocks. Protect us from invasion and exile. Eliminate the crime in our streets. How blessed the people who have all of this. How blessed are the people who have God for God. Our Old Testament reading from the Song of Solomon, chapter 8, verses 5 through 14. Who is this I see coming up from the country, arm and arm with her lover? Man, I found you under the apricot tree and woke you up to love. Your mother went into labor under that tree, and under that very tree she bore you, the woman. Hang my locket around your neck. Wear my ring on your finger. Love is invincible, facing danger and death. Passion laughs at the terrors of hell. The fire of love stops at nothing. It sweeps everything before it. Flood waters can't drown love. Torrents of rain can't put it out. Love can't be bought. Love can't be sold. It's not to be found in the marketplace. My brothers used to worry about me. Our little sister has no breasts. What shall we do with our little sister when men come asking for her? She's a virgin and vulnerable, and we'll protect her. If they think she's a wall, we'll top it with barbed wire. If they think she's a door, we'll barricade it. Dear brothers, I'm a walled-in virgin still, but my breasts are full, and when my lover sees me, he knows he'll soon be satisfied. The man, King Solomon, may have vast vineyards and lush, fertile country. When he hires others to work the ground, people pay anything to get in on that bounty. But my vineyard is all mine, and I'm keeping it to myself. You can have your vast vineyard, Solomon, you and your greedy guest. Oh, lady of the gardens, my friends are with me listening. Let me hear your voice. The woman. Run to me, dear lover. Come like a gazelle. Leap like a wild stag on the spice mountains. Our New Testament reading comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 11, verses 45 through 57. That was a turning point for many of the Jews who were with Mary. They saw what Jesus did and believed in him but went back to the Pharisees and told on Jesus. The high priests and the Pharisees called a meeting of the Jewish ruling body. What do we do now, they asked. This man keeps on doing things. 
creating God's signs. If we let him go on, pretty soon everyone will be believing in him and the Romans will come and remove what little power and privilege that we have. Then one of them, it was Caiaphas, the designated chief priest that year, spoke up. Don't you know anything? Can't you see that it's our advantage that one man dies for the people rather than the whole nation be destroyed? He didn't say this on his own accord, but as chief priest that year, he unwittingly prophesied so that Jesus was about to die sacrificially for the nation. And not only for the nation, but so that all God's exile, scattered children, might be gathered together into one people. From that day on, they plotted to kill him, so Jesus no longer went out in public among the Jews. He withdrew into the country, bordering the desert to a town called Ephraim, and secluded himself there with his disciples. The Jewish Passover was coming. Crowds of people were making their way from the country up to Jerusalem to get themselves ready for the feast. They were curious about Jesus. There was a lot of talk of him among those standing around in the temple. What do you think? Do you think he'll show up at the feast or not? Meanwhile, the high priest and the Pharisees gave out the word that anyone who knew his whereabouts should inform them. They were all set to arrest him. And here ends our readings today.